hopefully, <laughs> as soon as I said it, hopefully I'm not crazy and imagining these clicking noises that my Titan extruder is making. Now the reason why you're, we're hearing this clicking, or hopefully w you all are hearing this clicking over the video not crazy, is because the filament is slipping on the gear. Now the gear is pretty aggressively cut, it's to a point where it's not going to grind the crap out of the filament if very with ease, but if something isn't perfect with like the bed level or the flow or what have you, which is a real pain to tune with this Bowden setup, um, yeah you get a lot of clicks. So what we're going to do is switch this these this printer design to a direct drive system. I'm going to start printer by printer. So we're going to switch this particular printer. As you can see, the uh, hot end carriage has been removed. So I'm going to go ahead and switch that out with my new designed direct drive Titan Aero setup. Now, of course, I have to go ahead and put this bad boy on the workbench in order to uh, for the swap to take place. All right, so we got our number four on the healing bench here. So I'm gonna go ahead and install these parts. Now, the uh, plan of attack is, of course, is to install the actual carriage, get the belts and everything cinched up on them properly. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start putting everything on and uh, do up the wiring for the motor because that's gonna be a little different. I've already got everything ready to go. I'm gonna need to uh, get the Titan extruder out and uh, actually install the uh, aero hot end plate to it. Got to clean this thing up too at some point. It looks pretty nasty. So essentially what you have to do with the Core XY setup is it's a little different than like a conventional if you're doing like a Cartesian or what have you. It's uh, you usually have two different belt trains where they're uh, of course you have one X one Y but this one you have X and Y kind of combined. They're kind of diagonally combined. What you have to do is you have to tension the belts. Basically you have to make sure that both ends are equally spaced. So when you pull tension on one belt, see, let's see. Yeah, as I tension the belt, as you can see, it's pulling away. So, and then this one, it pulls towards. So the bottom belt pulls towards, the uh, top belt pulls away. And you can't just go and tension them tight as possible, both of them, or else the, uh, the gantry is going to be slanted and you're going to have tracking issues because you're going to create resistance on the bearings on each side. So hope that uh, clears up the process while I was finagling with this for a bit. We got everything taken care of in terms of the mechanicals. So now I have to go ahead and install the fan, have to install the end stop, which and eventually we're going to go ahead and get the extruder and hot end motor assembly installed there too. All right, so I did a bunch of work off camera just because uh, ran into a few roadblocks. First off, the, I had to like modify the actual plastic part of this bracket bit. Come on now, there we go. So I had to like cut out a little piece up here. Also, can't really see it because I have this tape up here. I uh, had to cut a little bit out for this little connector on the fan and had to also tape over this bit here because uh, there was going to be a little bit of a leak in airflow. There's going to be a little bit out here, but that, ser that can also serve as a purpose as for basically cooling down the motor a little bit, which is kind of nice. So I've got the E3D Titan Aero. Now this is actually a legitimate part. Uh, the actual Titan part is legitimate. The Aero part is a knockoff, but it's exactly uh, pretty much an exact copy. Hence, it fits right over it. It wouldn't fit over any of my clones, so I had to use the legitimate 
thing, which I had issues with the past with the Bowden system. For some weird reason, uh, the actual hobbed gear wasn't really engaging, or it was over-engaging with the plastic, grinding it down, what have you. But seems to be working all right. Had to take a blowtorch to the hot end block to remove, uh, basically I had to remove this barrel here in order to twist this guy on, get it straight on. And then of course I had to put this guy back in, which is a bit of a pain because there's a bunch of plastic oozed all over the thing. So that was fun. Now I got it on. Need to put in a new thermistor because don't know how well y'all will be able to see this here. Yeah, if you can see that, there's like exposed copper on, on these little sheathing. The sheathing is very weak, so I don't know how I'm gonna proceed. I'm probably gonna get another thermistor. I have a couple of others here I can just swap in and I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. So hopefully I can get one that's more reliable, at least has, has better sheathing on it. But I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start to wire this bad boy up. I need to get the motor cables extended. The right now they're just bare leads. They don't have any connectors on them. I have some crimp connectors I'm gonna throw on there. All right, folks, so basically just still doing some more off-camera work. Uh, wrapped up the actual hardware installations. Got a fan, everything done here. Just finishing up the wiring. Had to do a few solder connections. Now what I'm gonna do here is I have this Bowden tube. Now the reason I have that is to reach the to go to the filament spool to just create a uh, just a basic uh, reliable path to the filament so I don't have any sort of binding or jamming for that. I'm just going to keep this exposed for the time being. Eventually I'll sheath it in some sort of wire wrap but for now I'm just going to keep it exposed until I make sure everything works properly so I don't have to undo it and screw around with that. So. Uh, I've got that done here. Of course, I had to extend the motor. Uh, finding motor cables was a bit of a pain. So, yeah, it was a fun, ex fun little journey there. But almost done with this here. Hopefully, when I power it up here, once I get the uh, you get the motor connected and make sure everything else. I think I need to connect the fan there as well and eventually order a fan because that right now I'm going to do a 24 volt fan. Which fingers crossed that will actually work. It, it'll probably go at half speed, but hopefully it's enough to cool down this uh, hot end here. All right, folks, so got everything wired up pretty good. Just did it off camera just because it's just a bunch of soldering and splicing. Nothing really too new here. Plus, I kind of have a tight workspace, and it uh, took me a little while to find some uh, the correct cables for the motor. I don't know. Uh, just lost my spools of individual 26-gauge wiring in the move. Some, they're, they're somewhere, but I uh, only found, like, one of them, but... I digress, I got it all done. Now, the reason I have this Capricorn tube or this Bowden tube still is to uh, create a, cons a nice, reliable path from the extruder to the filament. Um, so I just have it bolted to the uh, old the old Bowden, um, this motor extruder or mount there. So for, I'll just use that for now. Should be decent enough. And of course, this wire's just gonna leave it like this until I make sure that everything will be good. Once I confirm everything is in working order, I'll go ahead and uh, button that up and we'll be uh, good to go. But yep, just gotta finish up. Gotta crimp the connector onto the motor, double check a few other things here, and then we'll be able to plug it in, test it, and um, have to do some configurations to the G-code. Not too, I don't want to do too much. Just some retraction settings I'm thinking here, mostly. The only issue I had is I had to use a 24 volt fan. This is 40 millimeter that cools down the hot end. Fingers crossed that'll work. I think it'll be all right. The speed may be a little bit lower, but that should give it enough dissipation in order for it to not jam up or overheat. Hopefully that'll work out for the meantime before I can get a 12 volt fan in or installed. So got everything in and installed here. And uh, fortunately, the uh, temps register properly looks good to go. Don't know why there's such a discrepancy with the bed and the hot end, but we shall find out here soon enough. But yep, so far everything seems to check out. Main thing to check whenever you're rewiring a hot end is to uh, preheat it. See if it actually changes. So just gonna zoom it up to our normal temp. Fingers crossed that it actually works. Okay, it's actually increasing. And it hasn't caught on fire yet, so. <laughs> 
seems to be all right. Okay, we reached our glass point here, so it looks like the uh, filament is starting to flex and move a bit, which is good because there's a lot of it on here. Oh, cool. And it's not smoking. That's another thing. If like your thermistor is not reading a correct value and it starts smoking, it's probably because it's getting hotter than it should. And uh, that's never really a good thing. So, so far, seems to be pretty good. Fingers crossed, we'll have uh, little to no issues here. But that is the actual upgrade to the Bowden system here. I'm going to put this design on Thingiverse for people to iterate and change and what have you. Just curious to see what kind of improvements people can make on this design. It's actually, it's a pretty rock solid design, I'll say so myself. There's really little to no issues with the actual previous Bowden. I mean, the Bowden design was alright, but hopefully this new uh, aero design will be a lot more consistent with the retractions and extrusions. That was the main issue I've been having with this printer design here. Fingers crossed that will also work as well. But yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, end this YouTube video here. Got some other cool ones coming out of the pipeline real soon. I hope you all liked the video. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. Consider subscribing and have a great day.